In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everybody, and on behalf of our Archbishop, His Grace, Anthony Fisher, as well as our Cathedral Dean, Father Don Richardson, and all the clergy here at St. Mary's Cathedral, I welcome you as we gather together on this second Sunday in the great season of Lent. We've been given announcements from the Australian Catholic Bishops' Conference to share with each and every one of you as some anxiety spreads throughout our nation at this time and indeed throughout the world, you are invited into this house of God to discover his peace and to know his presence with us in all things. To help prevent the infection spreading from any person to person, you are encouraged that during the celebration of Holy Mass, that you, you refrain from shaking hands during the sign of peace. And instead, you might turn to the person next to you and wish that peace be with them. Also, in regards to the reception of the body of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, you ask to please consider receiving Holy Communion on the hand. If you are receiving Holy Communion on the tongue, to do so as well with caution. Each and every one of us should know, however we receive the Eucharist, we do that reverently, trustingly, that it is the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, given to us, the Divine Physician. And in general, please use caution in considering your health and also the health of others. Today, Jesus Christ takes us up the mountain where he is transfigured to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us acknowledge our sins and ask God for his mercy and his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, and therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your family, and your father's house, for the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name so famous that it will be used as a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who slight you. All the tribes of the earth shall bless themselves because of you. So Abram went as the Lord told him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul.
Paul to Timothy. With me, bear the hardships for the sake of the good news, relying on the power of God who has saved us and called us to be holy, not because of anything we ourselves have done, but for his own purpose and by his own grace. This grace had already been granted to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has only been revealed by the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus. He abolished death, and he has proclaimed life and immortality through the good news. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone. There in their presence he was transfigured. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared to them and they were talking with him. Then Peter spoke to Jesus, Lord, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when suddenly a bright cloud covered them with shadow. And from the cloud there came a voice which said, this is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favor. Listen to him. When they heard this, the disciples fell on their faces, overcome with fear. But Jesus came up and touched them. Stand up, he said, do not be afraid. 
And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus gave them this order, tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. We spoke of Lent being a season of penance and preparation. Last week we talked about how God is inviting us to follow Jesus into this time in the wilderness, a place indeed where we know we would be tempted, where we might have to face our weaknesses, but a time to to discover how Christ has conquered all that is evil and invites us to share in that victory. And so here we are now, a little more than a week into the Lenten season, and perhaps those things that we had set ourselves as Lenten disciplines are proving to be too much of a challenge. When I say too much, we might be tempted to be discouraged by our efforts and even want to give up on them and say, that's enough. The church in her great wisdom on this second Sunday of Lent gives us reason to persevere, to continue in following Jesus Christ even if it means during that following, you might discover how weak you can be. Christ knows our weaknesses. Today, Christ chooses three of his close apostles, each of whom was gifted, but also each of whom Christ would have come to know in a very intimate way to be flawed, to have their own struggles too. Jesus chooses them and leads them up a mountain. This day, each and every one of us are being taken up the mountain. It's not something we can do ourselves. As St. Paul reminds us in his letter to Timothy, it's not because of anything that's good that we have done ourselves that has accomplished holiness, but it's the good that we are invited to share in by God's grace. And we can do real good with the help of God's assistance. Today, God wants to take us up to that place where we discover who He is in order to better understand, too, who we are. Jesus appears with Moses and Elijah, two of the most important prophets and figures of the Old Testament of our Jewish ancestors. There he is talking with them. In the center, Christ has come not to abolish the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them. And Jesus takes Peter, James and John up that mountain because he too wants them to know that he has come to be 
their own life's fulfillment. We are made for God. And God will take us into that true end that we all desire. That place of glory with God in heaven. But we're not there yet. And in this season of Lent, we are told not to get too far ahead of ourselves either. Easter is still quite a while away. The glory of the resurrection we will celebrate, but not right now. Today, we're given a glimpse of that glory in the transfiguration of Jesus the Lord. Peter up there recognizes this is the place of great wonder, amazement, and he wants to remain there. And Jesus says, no, we're to go back down. There's still some suffering to be done yet. Christ has given them a glimpse of his glory in order to sustain them in times where they would surely question and even potentially doubt. Indeed, Peter would even deny. And yet, what is going to get him through that denial? What is going to get him through that time of his own awareness of weakness? It's surely all that Jesus revealed to them, all that Jesus spoke to them, all that Jesus promised them. And so too for us. We are invited to follow God wherever he leads us. And that can be, for some, a huge jump. Think of Abraham in our first reading today. He was asked to leave his land, his family, all that had become to him important, all that was even good in his life. God asked him to leave that, to follow him, to discover something he had yet known. And he did. In one of the simplest lines of sacred scripture, something profound is being put before each and every one of us. We heard at the end of our first reading today, Abraham went as the Lord told him. We live in a time that not many people want to go the way that the Lord is telling. And many would prefer that Jesus would go the way that the world is telling. And that only leads to confusion, brothers and sisters. That only leads to the kind of panic and anxiety that we are seeing in our country and in our world today which is ultimately rooted in a fear of death. Sin is the real virus that plagues humanity. And death is its crown. Jesus comes as the King, the Lord of all, the one who destroys sin and death, and promises to deliver a people, not just us as individual persons, but together, the people of God, the community of believers, the body of Christ. Today we are called to come with the anxieties, perhaps the worries and concerns that we struggle with, due to our own weaknesses, due to the weakness of others around us, 
to allow Christ to take us up to that mountain where we know he is God. Listen to him. Following him back down into the mountain, sorry, back down from the mountain. We know that there will still be struggles, but we know too that there is a great glory for each of us to discover and to share in. And so as we continue in this season of Lent, let us do so with a humble trust. Persevere in our Lenten disciplines and practices and know that the holiness we long for is a result of the gift of God's grace each of us are called to share in. Together, let us stand and profess our faith in the one true God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. When our Redeemer was transfigured before Peter, James and John, they saw the glory of God on the mountain. Let us seek God's favour in our prayers now that the whole church may be turned away from worldly preoccupation to heavenly priorities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of our world may listen to the Son of God, the Beloved, through whom all war and discord can cease and justice be established. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that, like Abraham, our father in faith, we will not refuse the Lord our God anything that he asks of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That efforts to keep us safe from the contagious coronavirus illness may be successful, and that compassion, solidarity, and healing care may not be compromised by fear. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those conscious of serious sin in their lives may not be discouraged by the effort asked of them if they are to return to the sacramental life of God's family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may dwell in the company of Moses, Elijah, and all the saints, especially those of our family and friends we call to mind now, and those for whom masses have been requested of the cathedral priests. Let us pray to the Lord. Most merciful Father, this season of Lent is a time of grace. Favour us with your kindness and mercy as we come before you in prayer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O oh Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through who Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death. On the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, Terry and Richard, his assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise 
or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, 
and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be sent under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before the final blessing, I invite you to be seated and welcome Elizabeth, who's coming to speak to us today about the important work of the St. Vincent de Paul Society here at St. Mary's Cathedral. Good morning, and thank you, Father. My name is Elizabeth Ma, and I'm a volunteer with the St. Vincent de Paul Society. I'm sure many of you have heard of the St. Vincent de Paul Society, or Vinnies, but many of you are probably not aware that the majority of the work done by Vinnies is conducted by volunteer lay Catholics through local parish conferences. A conference is a group of people who meet regularly with a common mission to help the disadvantaged and marginalised. What that means in practice is that we go in pairs into people's homes to provide financial and other assistance. We're looking to revitalise the St Mary's Cathedral Conference, which supports people in the Woolloomooloo and Darlinghurst area. If you want to know anything more about how the conference works or have any questions at all, the president of our conference, Jen Murphy, and myself will be over at the College Street exit after Mass. Thank you very much for your time, and thank you, Father. And thank you, Elizabeth, for being with, with us today. And I'd like to echo her words of invitation and encouragement, too, for the important work that St. Vincent de Paul Society does. And so if you're looking for a concrete way to practice that spiritual exercise of almsgiving, of charitable works being extended to those who are especially in need, please come and see our volunteers at the College Street door, which is to my right, to your left. Please be upstanding now for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.